Why are you entrusting our newborn baby to my sister every day? My husband John's call interrupted my day. His usually calm voice was tinged with unexpected anger. Rapidly, I sought to dispel the misunderstanding. Our daughter is at home, sleeping, I assured him. Surprised, his tone shifted. Really, he exclaimed. Confusion enveloped us both as questions arose. I'll speak with my sister-in-law Amanda to uncover the truth, I resolved. I reached out to my sister-in-law Amanda and uncovered a startling truth. Let me introduce myself. I'm Elizabeth, married to John for five years. Just a year younger than him, our joy was recently doubled with the arrival of our daughter Sophie. She's the epitome of cuteness, but being a first-time mom has its challenges. With my parents living far away, I didn't have the luxury of heading back home after childbirth. Since leaving the hospital, I've been navigating this new world solo during the day. I must admit, I've been getting by largely thanks to John's unwavering support. Despite his long work hours, he's always there for Sophie and me, never once complaining. His gentle demeanor eases any parenting stresses I encounter, whether it's struggling to soothe Sophie to sleep or tending to her cries in the dead of night. His presence has been a lifeline, and I'm immensely grateful for it. So you can imagine my shock when he called, his voice laced with unexpected frustration. Elizabeth Mom just called me. What's going on? He demanded. Confused, I replied. Your mom. What are you talking about? Why would we leave our newborn with Amanda every day? His mention of Amanda caught me off guard. She's John's sister, residing just a short walk away with her parents. Amanda, working from home, also takes care of her mother, making her quite flexible with her time. My husband's critique persisted. Leaving a three-week-old baby, I couldn't fathom doing that. Amanda hasn't cared for a baby before. I get that you're tired post-birth, but you should have talked to me before entrusting her to Amanda. He expressed his worry, palpable his distress signaled that this was no ordinary misunderstanding. Wait, I'm lost. Amanda caring for a newborn? Why did your mom call you? Why would I need your consultation? What do you mean leaving Sophie with Amanda? Have I been doing that? I countered, utterly bewildered. It's been nearly two weeks. Amanda didn't complain, not wanting to strain your relationship. But mom couldn't stay silent, he clarified. Bob's revelation stunned me. It was a narrative I had no recollection of. With my daughter right beside me, with numerous questions swirling, I prioritized clearing the confusion swiftly. Sophie, our daughter is at home asleep. She's right here with me, I assured him. Bob's astonishment resurfaced. What do you mean? He inquired. I'm just as confused as you are, honestly. I've been following the advice to keep newborns indoors, so besides medical appointments, I haven't been anywhere. I haven't even visited your family's house, and it's been a while since Amanda came over after Sophie's birth, I clarified. Then whose baby is Amanda caring for? Bob pondered aloud. I wish I knew. Why would Amanda fabricate looking after our baby? Each question seemed to spiral into another, leaving us both puzzled. As the lunch break chime sounded through the phone, I made a decision. I need to speak with Amanda. I want to understand why she might concoct such a lie. If there's a misunderstanding and she thinks she's caring for Sophie, that's concerning. I'll also call mom, I announced. Bob paused before expressing his regret. I'm sorry for doubting you. I was just really worried about Sophie. It's all right, you're concerned about Sophie, aren't you? Besides, when I told you she's right here, you didn't doubt me. You trusted me. I comforted him. After our call ended, I wasted no time dialing my sister-in-law's number. Amanda, do you have a moment? There's something I need to discuss, I started. Elizabeth, I need to talk to you too. Amanda replied. Amanda and Bob are close in age, which is why she's the same age as me, despite being my sister-in-law. We've always had a good relationship, even going up together when I was dating Bob, so it puzzled me why she hadn't mentioned anything about this situation. I couldn't fathom why she would fabricate such a story. Well, now's a good time. Bob just filled me in. Amanda, what's this about you looking after Sophie? 
I haven't left her with anyone. I questioned, bewildered. Ha! Huh. Amanda's surprised voice followed, accompanied by the sound of a crying baby. It seems she was indeed tending to an infant. Listening to Amanda's reaction, a realization dawned on me. Amanda wasn't fabricating anything. She genuinely believed she was caring for Sophie. To dispel her misconception, I began to explain the truth. Sophie's right here with me, fast asleep. I'm really baffled by all of this, but how did you end up with a baby, Amanda? And why do you think it was Sophie? I asked, seeking clarity. Amanda replied, shedding light on the situation. Last week, Dad dropped off a baby with me. He said, Elizabeth seems overwhelmed, so you should assist her with the baby. This revelation left me dumbfounded. Then Amanda disclosed another shocking detail. I was terrified because I've never cared for a baby. I hadn't heard from you, Elizabeth, and when I consider calling you, Dad warned, if you contact Elizabeth, she'll just stress out. Show some consideration for your sister-in-law. I have my own responsibilities, even when I'm at home. It appeared that my father-in-law's deceit initiated this chaos, but the identity of the child Amanda was caring for remained unclear. Thinking that confronting my father-in-law directly might solve the confusion, I inquired, is he home? Unfortunately, he's out at the moment. Lately, he returns home late in the evening, takes the child I've been tending to, claiming he'll return her to Elizabeth, then leaves again. He usually returns in about 20 to 30 minutes, Amanda explained. Frustrated by my father-in-law's manipulation involving my daughter and me, I felt compelled to address the situation head on. I understand. I'll discuss this with Bob, but we might visit tonight. I decided before ending the call. I promptly emailed my husband detailing what I learned from his sister. We should ask Dad directly, came the suggestion. So when Bob returned home, we made our way to my in-laws. Along the journey, Bob recounted his conversation with his mother. Mom was also quite upset to discover that the child she thought was her grandchild wasn't. That's a significant shock, isn't it? I didn't envision Sophie's first family gathering unfolding like this. It's quite a complicated situation, he elaborated. Due to her back issues, his mother hadn't met our daughter yet. I had hoped to introduce Sophie to her once she was ready to venture out after a month, but now I found myself disheartened that our introduction had to occur amidst such turmoil. Upon reaching my in-law's home, we found my mother-in-law and sister-in-law both appearing bewildered. As we entered, Amanda spoke up. Bob, Elizabeth, Dad mentioned he would return the child we've been caring for, but he hasn't returned yet. Understanding the situation, Bob intervened. I see, Mom. Despite the confusion, this is our daughter, Sophie. With that, I brought Sophie closer to my mother-in-law. Upon laying eyes on Sophie, my mother-in-law's expression softened. She's absolutely adorable. She bears a striking resemblance to Bob when he was a baby. I'm thrilled to finally meet her, and Elizabeth, you've done remarkably well. I'm sorry you've been entangled in all of this, she expressed with sincerity. It's all right, I'm just as perplexed as everyone else, I responded. Just as I spoke, Amanda chimed in. I'm baffled too. Who's this child I've been caring for? I don't understand why Dad would lie like this. I've been putting in so much effort, believing it was Sophie. He should consider my feelings, too. Amanda's frustration mirrored my own towards her father. Attempting to lighten the mood, Bob interjected, But Amanda, you've met Sophie before. You should have noticed it's a different baby. Well, don't all babies look alike? I thought something was off, but I assumed baby's appearances changed quickly. Amanda hastily defended herself. At that moment, our father-in-law returned. I'm back. Wait, why are Bob and Elizabeth here? Our father-in-law's panic was palpable. This deception stemmed from him. The rest of us shared disapproving glances, each silently accusing him. Struggling under the tension, our father-in-law began to stutter. Oh, Elizabeth, it's been some time. What brings you here? Did you forget something? He attempted to divert attention. Turning to Amanda, he added, 
Amanda, what's going on? I asked you to check for forgotten items. He seeded with anger at our father-in-law's manipulation, using mine and my daughter's names in his deceit, and then shifting the blame onto Amanda. I instinctively held my daughter closer, feeling the tension radiate through the room. Both my husband and sister-in-law shared the same sentiment, their fists clenched in frustration. It was me who broke the silence, the anger evident in my voice. Dad, seriously, are you honestly saying that this is beyond unacceptable, even for you? What do you mean? My father-in-law seemed startled by the intensity of my tone. My husband and sister-in-law echoed my sentiments, demanding answers. Dad, explain yourself. Elizabeth has never left Sophie with anyone. Why would you fabricate such a lie? There must be a reason for someone to care for a stranger's newborn, right? That's correct, you manipulated me into caring for a child. Who is this baby? I'm terrified, even if it's my nephew, let alone a stranger's. I won't tolerate it anymore. Amanda interjected with rapid-fire conviction. My father-in-law was speechless while the three of us continued to glare at him, demanding the truth. However, my mother-in-law's reaction was different. She turned pale, murmuring, No, it can't be. You're not still involved with her. Her words left my husband, sister-in-law, and me stunned. My father-in-law began to sweat, feigning innocence. What? What are you talking about? He stuttered, attempting to deflect. But my typically calm husband had reached his limit. Dad, enough with the act. You've been playing dumb all along. Do you think you can deceive us? We know you've been lying about everything. Just come clean. Wait, Bob. Please calm down. I attempted to intervene, but my husband persisted. Dad, you've been manipulating Elizabeth and Sophie to cover up your deceit, and you owe Amanda an apology. Caring for a newborn is a monumental responsibility, even if it's your own child. Consider how overwhelming it must have been for Amanda, who has never experienced parenthood before. Once he started, my husband couldn't halt his tirade, despite whatever excuses our father-in-law might conjure. My husband remained steadfast. Perhaps realizing he couldn't evade the truth any longer, my father-in-law spoke softly, and then he confessed to the unbelievable truth. That child is mine. At his admission, my husband's momentum dissipated, his mouth hanging agape in disbelief. Amanda and I were equally stunned into silence. It was my mother-in-law who shattered the quiet, her voice quivering, tears brimming in her eyes. I knew it. You're still involved with her. I was foolish to forgive you before. Involved with her? My husband queried, puzzled. In response, our father-in-law's complexion paled even further. Ignoring him, my mother-in-law continued. He had an affair. It happened around the time you two were getting married, about five years ago. He promised me he'd never do it again, and I forgave him. But now, that's why I thought Sophie bore a resemblance to Bob. She's his flesh and blood after all. I thought she was my true grandchild. Unable to contain her emotions any longer, my mother-in-law broke into tears. Witnessing her distress only fueled my anger towards my father-in-law. My husband regained his composure, unleashing his wrath upon his father. You're despicable, Dad. You not only deceived us but betrayed Mom twice. How could you stoop so low? I can't fathom that someone like you is our father. Bob's outburst was followed by Amanda's incredulous response. What do you mean by my child? Are you joking? You had a child with your mistress and left it with me. I can't believe this. How could you do something so despicable? I never want to see your face again. Despite the scathing remarks from his own children, our father-in-law merely chuckled and remarked, calm down, there's nothing we can do about what's already happened. The mistress didn't want to marry me or anything like that. She just didn't have any money, so she had to work in the meantime. I had to take care of the child. I couldn't bear witnessing my father-in-law's callousness. Enough, I interjected, my voice trembling with anger. This isn't a laughing matter. A life has been brought into this world. Do you grasp the gravity of that? At your age, my father-in-law seemed taken aback, losing his balance and falling onto the ground. 
However, instead of offering assistance, Bob and Amanda hurled insults. You worthless old man. You're no longer a father. I can't even stand the look of you. Get out of our sight, they exclaimed. Even faced with their fury, my father-in-law attempted to downplay the situation, saying, don't say such things. My lips tensed as I stared daggers at my father-in-law. I no longer have the patience to tolerate someone like you. Let's get divorced, I declared firmly. My father-in-law's smile vanished, his face contorting with wrinkles as he became serious. But didn't you forgive me last time? He pleaded. However, his attempt at manipulation was futile. Yes, I forgave you for your infidelity, but I won't tolerate your disrespect any longer. I retorted. It having you out of our lives brings peace to our home, then so be it. And as for my survival, I'll manage just fine without you, I added as my father-in-law clung to my mother-in-law's feet. I watched him with disdain. Bob and Amanda mirrored my sentiments, their gazes cold and unwavering. It was evident that everyone in the room had reached their limit with my father-in-law. Amanda erupted in anger. I'll take care of mom, so we'll be fine without you. But how do you plan to live? You've always relied on mom for everything, from cooking to laundry. Amanda's words visibly rattled my father-in-law. He turned to my mother-in-law with pleading eyes. You wouldn't leave me, would you? We spent decades together. You can't imagine life without me, can you? However, his pleas were swiftly dashed as my mother-in-law shook off his clinging arm. Stop kidding yourself. How much do you need to degrade people to feel satisfied? Who would want to stay with a cheater like you? I'm filing for divorce right now. If you're so fond of her, why don't you go be with your mistress? My mother-in-law snapped, her voice firm and resolute. What? Wait, let's talk. We can fix this. That woman meant nothing to me. You're the only one I love, my father-in-law pleaded, clutching onto my mother-in-law once more. But he was met with another wave of Amanda's fury. Talking to someone who refuses to acknowledge their mistakes is pointless. We're leaving this place soon, and mom is coming with us. Until we're gone, stay away from home, dad. I never want to see you again. Now get out, Amanda demanded, attempting to forcefully escort my father-in-law out. When he refused to budge, Bob had to physically drag him away. Please wait, give me another chance. Just one more, my father-in-law pleaded until the very end. But his pleas fell on deaf ears as nobody paid him any attention. As Amanda had foreseen, my father-in-law's life spiraled into chaos, struggling to manage even the simplest tasks. He found himself unable to tolerate the growing clutter and filth in his home. Desperate for assistance, he turned to his mistress, only to be met with rejection at her doorstep. It appeared she had no intention of marrying him either. With no one left to care for the children, his mistress was unable to work, leading to financial strain. She began pressing my father-in-law for alimony, even resorting to legal action to secure child support. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law and mother-in-law relocated to an apartment not far from ours. As over a month had passed since Sophie's birth, I started visiting them more frequently, accompanied by Sophie. I maintained my amicable relationship with Amanda, acting as if nothing had changed, and my bond with my mother-in-law remained strong. Moving forward, I'm determined to raise my daughter to the best of my abilities, with the support of my husband, sister-in-law, and mother-in-law by my side.